In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about solving ice tables, what we call ice tables, and chemical equilibria problems. In particular, we'll be looking at the TI-84 and 83, which operate identically in this fashion, uh, using the Wabbit uh, emulator. This is what we'll cover, uh, not all in a great amount of detail, but in general, what a root of an equation is. We'll also talk about setting up ice tables, uh, setting up the calculator to find the find the equation roots, and then a little bit about how do you determine which root is right. Uh, this is more a practical uh, introduction to this kind of thing. And then we'll also talk a little bit about how the calculator actually finds roots. And then, uh, if necessary, uh, if you can't find the correct root of the equation, how you go about setting boundary conditions for your problem and also initiating the right guess uh, so that your calculator has a little easier time finding a root. So if you imagine an equation like x squared minus 3 equals 6 and you were solving this in a math class, really what you would do is you would solve this equation analytically, rearranging it to come to an equation that looks like this one here. And that equation you would solve uh, by solving it for 9 is equal to x squared and then taking the square root and then realizing that the equation has two solutions. There's two values of x which satisfy this equation. These values of x which satisfy the equation are what we refer to as roots of the equation. So this is a parabola. This is the equation x squared minus 9, which you get from the rearrangement of x squared minus 3 equals 6, just so you can see where the roots are. And if you think about what roots are, they're the x-axis intercepts uh, of this equation, and that's what allows this equation to be satisfied. Now, if you're a calculator and you're trying to find the root of an equation, you either have uh, sophisticated algorithms for uh, determining what the roots of equations are, or you do it numerically. And most of the calculators that we use do these calculations numerically. And by that I mean what the calculator does is plugs in a value for x and checks to see if x squared minus 9 equals 0. And if it doesn't, then it says, well, maybe I'm over here on the line. It says, well, I clearly need to make my x value smaller. And then it plugs in another value. And it iterates this way closer and closer to the root until eventually the value that it finds is so close to the root that it can no longer tell the difference when it changes the value for x. So it can no longer tell the difference in the y value when it changes the value for x. Now, typically calculators um, have a number of times that they'll do this that's set and when you solve an equation for its root sometimes you have to restart the solver because it's sort of run out of iterations what they call steps in calculating approximate roots now think about a calculator that starts out over here it may actually find this root and not find this root and using this sort of algorithm so a numeric solver finds one root where an equation might actually have multiple roots and uh, I'll cover how you can, if you need to, find some of these other roots uh, later. So here's a typical problem. 2A makes B and C. And we start with 0.1 atmospheres at A. And we want to know what the equilibrium concentrations or pressures of B and C are with an equilibrium constant of 155. So we, write our, we set up our ice table. We write the equation for the reaction at the top line. And then we type in I, C, E, initial change equilibrium, and we note that A starts at 0.1 molar, and B and C, because they're not mentioned in the problem and nothing said about initial concentrations, we assume that those values are zero. Now, every time a, B changes one, A changes two. Every time C changes one, B changes one, A changes two, and we designate that by saying that they, if B changes by X, then a must change by 2x. The other thing that we're doing is we're looking at which way the reaction goes. Since B and C are both 0, the reaction can't go left. That is, I can't go from B to C to make A. So it has to go to the right. We talk about the direction the equation shifts to find equilibrium. In this case, it's shifting to the right. The direction where it shifts towards always has positive signs, so everything on the equilibrium 
on one side of the equilibrium arrow has to be positive, whereas on the other side, the signs have to be the opposite. So in this case, A changes by minus 2x, B changes by plus x, and C changes by plus x. This allows us to add, if you add the initial and the change, you get the equilibrium expressions. These are the equilibrium expressions down here. We pro plug that into the equilibrium constant expression, and what you'd find is something like this. Now what we have to do is solve this equation for its roots. You can use a quadratic equation or you can use a calculator and what we're covering in this uh, video is how to use a calculator to do this. So what we're going to do is turn our calculator on, go to the math menu and find solver. In the TI-89 it's known as the numeric solver and it works very much in the same way. And I'm going to hit enter. Now it says zero equals, and so what we're going to do, if we go back up to here, we're going to get our equation in the form of zero equals something. So, x squared divided by 0.1 minus 2x is equal to 155, x squared is equal to 155. We just bring the 155 to the other side of the equation. So now this is what we have, and this is what we'll type into the calculator. So I use the variable expression here, the x, t, theta, and n, whatever it is over here, squared, divided by, and I'll open up a parenthesis, 0.1 minus 2x, and then that whole quantity will get squared, minus 155. Now I'm going to hit enter. And now it says x equals to 0. Now x equals to 0 isn't the root. x is the value of 0 is just whatever value was in x before I started this whole process. If I put 1 in here and hit and go back to the equation and back down, it's just going to say 1. It's just whatever value is stored there. Now I can go to try to solve and find the roots. So I'm going to go alpha solve. And the root that I get is the one that I'm showing down here on the right hand side, 0.0521. I'll show you something really quick. We'll go back to the calculator. I'm going to clear that out. We'll put a zero in and we'll solve it again. And you'll notice that I got a different root. Now, in a second order equa equation, which is what this is generally, you can have up to two roots. And in fact, this equation has two roots. And the two roots are 0 0.0481 molar and 0 0.0521 molar. What you have to figure out next is of those two roots, which one's the right one to use? Now, of course, I put a bold on the one that's right, the correct value. But the question is, why isn't 0 0.052 molar a correct value? So here's the bottom line on roots. In general, the smallest positive root is the root that you want. That is the correct root of the equation to solve the equilibrium calculation. Now, let's go over a little bit why that is. First, it's got to be positive because concentrations cannot be negative. Concentration can only be positive. The second reason, the reason that you want the smallest pos positive root is that roots that are too big will cause expressions within the equation to become negative. So, for example, if you think about 0 0.100 minus 2 times 0 0.052, this is going to give you a value of negative 0 0.004. But what does this value actually represent? Well, if you go back, this value, the bottom part of the equation, represents the concentration of A at equilibrium. The concentration of A can't be less than zero, so we have to eliminate 0 0.052 as a root. Okay, so you know, when I solved this problem the first time, I'll go back to my calculator. I put in one and I went solve. You, you recognize that it found a root that was the wrong root first. How do you avoid having this problem? Well, one of the things to think about is the boundaries. 
the boundaries for a chemical problem, if you think about a number line where left is low numbers and right is large numbers, zero needs to be the lowest possible number for our answer. Typically, if you plug a zero in for x first and solve the equation, you'll usually get the lower root of the equation. So automatically, by starting at zero, I allow the the calculator to find the lowest positive root which is the solution to the equation. Sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes starting at zero will cause it to find a negative root because many times equations will also have negative roots. If this happens to you, the thing that you need to do is look at this bound. The bound using the number line concept is the lowest possible value for x. So if I scoot over here and I plug in zero and delete the rest of this and hit enter and then go back up here and type in zero I go alpha solve it'll automatically search starting at zero remember I said the computer plugs a value in and begins searching for a new value it will start at zero when I plug zero in and because the left bound is zero it will start searching in the positive direction the other thing to think about for bounds is there's a certain number that's too big because it causes some concentrations within the equilibrium expression to be negative. So zero is always the less left bound. To find the what we call the right bound, what you do is you take the expressions in the equilibrium expression, that is, for example, 0.1 minus uh, 2x, 0.1 minus 2x, and you say, well, this ha also has to be greater than zero. And you solve this, and what you find when you do this equation is that x has to be less than 0 0.05. So, in fact, you can make the right bound of this equation 0 0.05, 0, hit enter, and then go back up here. And when you solve, what you've just done is you've restricted the calculator to searching between 0 and 0 0.05. And regardless of where you start your search now, it will always be searching within 0 and 0 0.05. In that other words, 0 0.052 won't even come up. 0 0.052, if I try to solve this, oh, it crashed. Sorry. It crashed because it knows it can't actually find that bound, and there it reset itself because it was so unhappy with it. Okay, so you can set the left bound, that's always zero. You can set the right bound by evaluating the expressions within the equilibrium expression itself. I hope that helps, and if you get a chance to try this, you need to try it. You can also use this for solving equations such as the two-point equation, uh, the Arrhenius equation, or for solving for orders of reactants and other things that we're doing in Chapter 13 but in particular where I want you to be using this in chapter 14 is solving for, and 15 and 16 and 17 is solving for roots of equations.